check 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 ha huh, that's better hi everyone my name is berty uh, this is my first trip to amrabad and i'm loving it it's really cool uh, now generally if you were to go on uh, google or just try to figure out who i am it will say i'm a molecular biologist but obviously that's not what this talk is about and we have had some amazing molecular biologists before me so i will not even try to go into that space but today we are going to talking about searching for the questions now normally ppt slides start with searching for the answers okay there's one like one guru on stage and it's like searching for the answers come to me i will tell you and well i have attended out those i generally didn't get answers i usually get more questions in those types of talks and uh, so i decided i'll do this is searching for the questions why because that is something which i started off as a hobby technically started off as an annoyance and now it is part of my life so let's go through that before that a small quote from mr douglas noel adams there is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable there is another theory which states that this has already happened yes and now i am a firm believer in this right now before we go on stage um okay so good i this is really good that we are doing this physically now i can ask questions to the audience and now you've been really uh, you've not been given an opportunity to engage with the speaker so far now it's going to change so we have people in the my volunteers who have uh, some gifts and some goodies probably some fruit drink who they will give it to somebody who will answer the forthcoming questions correctly now here's the thing this is a fun quiz nobody is going to judge you you can shout out the answer you can shout out whatever you want you will not be judged please feel free to say whatever you want let's try to get the answer out of you okay everybody up for it okay even if i mean definitely if you're not a quizzer if you're not a quizzer if you think i just like sitting at home and watching doremon yeah cool you're the type of person i want so let's see this is question number 1 What is the highest point south of New Delhi? Come on, let's see. Somebody just shout out answer first of all. Anybody wants to go for this? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. I I saw you put up your hand. You have to tell some answer. Oh, little bugs, you can see me. Oh, thank you. But you put up your hand anyway. So why don't you just tell me some answer? You can say anything you want. Just name a place or a building or a thing that's really high. Chandni Chowk, huh? okay <laughs> i meant high as in height you know right yeah okay so somebody out there yes sir kutub minar now that's a really tall structure interesting i need something taller taller much taller yes the garbage dump you're talking about bangalore aren't you no 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 very interestingly you're talking about landfills and landfills are quite tall but i need something taller come on helipad well there are lots of helipads or i'm talking something even more taller i am very surprised nobody has googled this yet come on sorry okay i have no idea what that is but apparently whatever it is it's not the right answer okay yes sir oh the library it is quite tall okay i'll give you all a clue it's a natural thing which all of you know about uh, who said that Okay that lady that says Mount Everest. Okay come on man and she gets a prize. Well done. It is Mount Everest. Good job. So Mount Everest is 1 degree south of New Delhi. We always think of Mount Everest as something far up north. It's like you know somewhere in the Himalayas. No it's not. Honestly speaking if like from Bangalore it's closer to me to go to Mount Everest than it is to go to New Delhi. we always think of mount everest as very far away but no it's quite close and it is pretty much the tallest structure on the planet isn't it you're not going to find anything taller than that probably taller than kutub minar i know i have been to the kutub minar not been to mount everest but i think it would probably overpower the kutub minar okay we have another question coming up so this is a story from greek mythology okay ariadne was a daughter of minos the king of crete her father put her in charge of a labyrinth or the maze where sacrifices were made as part of reparations to the goddess athena 
this maze was guarded by a creature with the head of a bull on the body of a man called a minotaur this is not the red bull mythology that's formula 1 that's different ariadne helped a lover theseus overcome the minotaur by using a ball of thread which you can see holding in her hand to help him out of the maze so here's a question in the english language what word do we get from that ball of thread now i know this is mythology and it's just 10 minutes before lunch so everybody's like no to half and all so i'll give you a small clue so i put a red color arrow which helps you see where it is and the clue is this had a different spelling then now let's see what word do we get from the english language from this hey, somebody it it it's used to help okay listen if you're putting up your hand there's a bulb right in my face so i can't see you so just shout out the answer sorry pregnant hmm is being pregnant able to help people come out of mazes i don't think so it might help you get out of some other problem but not out of mazes so what yes yarn okay so yarn's a good word it is basically yarn but there's a particular word which helps people get out of labyrinths and mazes which we have all used and i have to say is staring at you right in the face somebody said something in the middle not arrow not compass and that gives you the point it's a word clue i already gave it man i just literally put it up the same clue so colon this had a different spelling so it was called clue with the e w so that was the clue which was led to thesis i mean getting out of the metal and nowadays we call it clue right okay now how about this chemistry students i know you are there engineering people so let's get this going lacrimatory factor synthase is released into the air when you do a particular daily task the synthase enzyme converts the amino acid sulfoxide of the item you are working on into sulfenic acid the unstable sulfenic acid rearranges itself into syndropenthyl s oxide i have helpfully given you a picture and this gets into the air irritates the lacrimal glands so the question what would you be doing for this beautiful chemistry reaction to happen karate okay then and that gentleman gets the drink chopping onions yes so this is the reason you cry while cutting onions you meaning all those people who actually help out your significant other or your family during dinner process not like my brother who likes to sit in the back and say no 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 that's not my job right so this is the interesting thing as to why onions make you cry this is the chemistry behind it ha huh? i'm guessing you figured it out because of lacrimal glands because lacrimal glands are your tear glands right now i know it's lunch time i know you're already hungry i apologize for this but let's get this going this is by an american who put up a blog post of 10 foods to eat before you die number 1 is something called peking duck okay this is number 4 The plate covering paper thin pancake is made from dash and dash cooked to lazy perfection on a hot griddle what creates a more rich flavor is a spiced concoction of mashed cooked potatoes fried onion served with liberal dosa ha this everybody will get yes i know you're all hungry okay don't have to like shout it in my face but yes that's some that's how an american describes masala dosa oh who who for the masala dosa yeah okay who who i am from bangalore by the way we have the best masala dosa sir yeah <laughs> Oh, technically, I am from Madurai. In Madurai, masala dosa they put mutton, chicken, and all that stuff. But it's okay. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. One more question. This I took this picture from my bike, so it's a very dangerous picture. Don't do it. But I had to take it. So this is the name of the bus service in Bangalore or in Karnataka. What is the name given to this bus service? Which is a clever reference to the fact that this is a service for the people in Canada. and also refers to it being as comfortable as traveling on a cloud in english so what's the name of the bus service if there are any bangaloreans here you are you should have got this immediately somebody said pushpa pushpak or okay, like pushpak vimana okay <laughs> ksrtc yeah the ksrtc is the name of the <laughs> the whole transport service this particular okay I know there are some people who went woohoo when the dementor reference came up. So uh, those Harry Potter fans, you should have a slight Leviosa. Leviosa will be if the Bangalore Karnataka thing calls it Leviosa, I would be losing it. No, no, no. It's it's, it's actually much more clever. It's very clever. 
it's a bit of kannada in it but uh, knowing dravidian languages you would you should be able to get to it it's just one word shall i do this now so this is called nimbus in kannada that is the reaction i wanted so in kannada nim means your and it's a bus so it's your bus and the nimbus is also the soft fluffy cloud and which you always see angels and you know romantic pairs going on in clouds so nimbus is a lovely pun right it also mentions the fact that it is soft and lovely like a cloud and it's also the bus of the people so now why or why did i come across all this information is because i was an annoying annoying little kid when i was a kid my mom dad grandpa grandma every single time i will be asking like why is this what is this how is this why does this happen and they used to play passing the parcel with me they'll be like i'll go to amma i'll like amma why is this ma go ask your dad i'll go to appa why is this pa go ask grandma finally granddad look and those three be like no no it's your he's your problem now so he'll be like okay fine i look at readers digest i will look at encyclopedia he'll finally come up with something and say ha huh, this is the reason it is like that but you find it out yourself i was a very very curious kid like for example that onion question was basically because of my curiosity as to ha huh, why is the fact that i'm cutting a vegetable which i really like makes me cry what is the reason so like that and that is that curiosity led to the fact that instead of searching for the answers i started getting more and more questions so this is me at the madras pub quiz now a lot of people uh, tell me but you host the hindu quiz you host you have been part of the kbc you have you have uh, hosted so many big rotary uh, quizzes and corporate quizzes what's your favorite quiz to host these are the ones i love to host why you are all a captive audience half of you are here only because of attendance problems and usually you go to a quiz people are there because they want to take part in a quiz now this is a pub all of those people came there to drink forget about their problems probably try and talk to some friend and make sure it grows across the friend zone stuff like that the last thing they want is to talk, listen to a guy talk about cutting onions and mount everest right it's the opposite of a captive audience to get them interested in gk to get them interested in facts and trivia and funda is one of the biggest challenges and which i absolutely adore and as obvious from this picture people were enjoying it as well and this is what drives me to be a quiz master so this is a quote from richard feynman which says i learned very early the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something so i was one of those people where i couldn't remember the names of things mostly but i would pride myself on the fact that i knew something about something uh there was this thing it, it still runs in my family that if you were to talk about any subject on the earth i would have something to say about it right now the thing is some people think it's bad but i don't think so not necessarily you can have your opinions you can have your different points of view but there's nothing wrong in you sharing some information that you might know yourself now this is where i come to this point about being quizzers and quiz masters now a lot of people here are here because they are part of the quiz club i can see the entire quiz club here and quiz club members usually think oh yeah we read lots of books we watch documentaries that's why i'm a quizzer huh, i know more than you now i genuinely believe that everybody within themselves has the ability to become a quizzer that you guys know something that you don't realize you know and as a quiz master my job is to bring it out my job is not to show off stuff that i know but to show off to you that you know more than you think you do and that's where the process of making a good question comes and this is an example this is a question which you would probably see in some messaging board a photo identify this person what is his first salary there's no extra information unless you know who this guy is you will not know who this guy is and why would anybody want or anybody even faintly remember what is his salary i mean i don't remember half my i don't after esi and pfi and all pfi and all i don't remember what my salary is why would i have to know what this guy's salary is right now the same question 
I'm going to phrase it a little differently in my style. This gentleman is the CEO of his company, but takes a very humble salary. Which company would that be if I told you his salary was one dollar and forty cents? Ha! See, that is well done. Good job. Why? Because Twitter has 140 characters. So you may be able to make the connect and go back. And now you look back at the question. See, this has no information. Unless you know who this dude is, you can't get the answer. But here, I am just giving a little extra information which helps to extrapolate and get you to the answer. It's technically one dollar only, but some creativity and you get the answer. Well done. This is the great Siddharth Basu, known as the godfather of quizzing. And he was one of the people, I mean, he genuinely is, along with my chemistry teacher, the greatly revered Divakar sir, who brought out this part of quizzing in me. The fact that they honed me into being a quiz master, right? The fact that I am able to stand on stage and ask questions where you discover about yourself is thanks to these people. And that also led to this. It's a series of quiz books which myself and my partner Akila Fadnis, we have uh, we have published over the years. <laughs> this is a little old. There are like seven more books now. But if it was too small, it wouldn't look good in the screen. So I put all the nice covers first. If you go online, you'll find the other ones. And Quizzes for Quirky Minds is the first book, which is an encyclopedia of all the Hindu Sunday magazine quizzes. Now, the thing about these quizzes and why people come up to me, even today, a lot of students came up to me and said, we love your quizzes, we like to do it. It's not because of the facts that are revealed, but the fact that it's revealed that you know the answer and you did not know that you knew the answer. So let's go to this. Quizzes, I ban you from answering this. Anybody in the quiz club, don't answer. This is only for those people who don't think they're quizzes, right? I am going to ask you a botanical question. Remember, we are in PDU where people don't like scientific names, but I'm going to make sure that one of you answers this. Let's get the fruity ready. This is a picture of the Caledonia melanema, a beautiful orchid. What is the common name of this orchid? Very nice, dancing orchid. Somebody else, look at the picture. What does it say? And that gets you point. This is the ballerina orchid. As you can see, it's a spitting image of that. And you could work it out immediately. This is called the ballerina orchid. If you hadn't figured it out, I would have given you the clue as to how many letters it is. Let's go to another one. Ha! Huh. This is called connecting the dots. There's a lovely quote by Steve Jobs. Creativity is just connecting things. A lot of people haven't had very diverse experiences. So they don't have enough dots to connect. Now, all of you have had very diverse experiences. But there are certain things that all of you have had at the same time, which allows me to believe that the next question, I think all of you should either go, yeah, I know it, or face palm when I give the answer. So let's try that out. So there are four pictures here. The first one says from 1950. Second one says from 1980. Third one says from 2000. And finally it says since 2016. What is this one entity which I can confidently say every single one of you have seen and used is this. Uh, go on. I need a very particular one. Wait, didn't I say not for the quiz club? Are you, are you part of the quiz club? And that gives you the answer. Well done. This is the 100 rupee note. This was the evolution of the 100 rupee note. Initially, it had two elephants on it. Then it had the Hirakut Dam from Orissa. Then it had the Kanchanjunga. And finally, now the Rani Kivav or the Queen's Temple. And all of you have handled it, haven't you? Is there anybody? I mean, there are a few people like the front row people who say, we only handle 2000 rupee note. 100 rupee note, now who takes? Yeah. So I'm talking to those people who like me, sir, 10 rupee note, they are, that types and all. Yeah. So everybody has seen of this. This is the power of observation, right? All of you have seen this. All you had to do was just connect the dots and you enter here. Okay. I think there's one more. Yeah. We have some really hot dude over there. And we have something that's a very specific stunt, a very, very extravagant famous building, a particular character famous from ads, a city in Italy, and Okay, lack of a better word, a profession. So there's something that connects all six of these. Now, before you connect, uh, can you shout out what do you think the words are? Okay, who's the first dude? Uh, girls, come on, you know who that is. 
what cucumber patch uh? benedril what benedict cumber patch it is yes amazing uh, okay what's the stunt uh, no x games is the event what is this particular thing that he's doing uh, it's not a skid i will tell you okay i'll tell you later okay what building that everybody knows that ah burj khalifa well done and what character is that ah devil is called the onida devil but devil right uh, the profession poacher okay now i'll give you these two now the first person to give me the connect you getting something the one on top is called a scramble okay and the one on the bottom is florence the city now somebody somebody tell me ha who's that what's your name brinda let's have a round of applause for brinda she is obviously very hungry today and she gets the answer yes ladies and gentlemen ex benedict when you make it with the hollandaise sauce scrambled eggs <laughs> yeah please feel free to face palm to just go boo egg burji how is that yeah. devil eggs when you take out the yellow and you mash them up put back in eggs florentine when you use spinach and finally poached eggs which are just just about runny okay that means i'm really hungry that means it's time to go for lunch and i just have to say thank you but before i go i have dreamt of this moment i have always wanted to do this where's the camera prabha we got a camera that's a camera thank you for coming for my tedx talk